Hello, my name is Morgan. I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in theater and performance studies, and I use the Zettelkasten system or the Slipbox system in Obsidian to take all of my notes and make up all of my ideas that are going into my PhD research. So the Slipbox serves two main purposes. Firstly, documentation. It's a place where we can document and store and then organize ideas that we're learning or finding elsewhere so that we remember them for later and we can use them in our future writing, for instance. And the second purpose is creation. Once we have notes existing in our system, we can then connect across those ideas and create new ideas that are emerging from what's already there. Obviously, documentation is super important for creation because as Julie Andrews, as Maria von Trapp says, nothing comes from nothing, nothing ever could. So both actions are necessary to develop your slipbox into something good. This video though is about the second action you can take in your Tettelkasten, which is creation. The Link in Your Thinking YouTube channel calls these two processes note taking and note making. Where documentation is note taking, you're just taking things down for later, and note making is creation. You're making up new ideas. Today we are talking about the latter note making. I did a session of note making earlier today and I recorded the screen while I did it. So I'm going to turn that screen recording on now and talk you through what I'm doing. If you've seen my previous video on the Settlecasten system, then this space will look familiar to you. If you haven't, then I recommend watching my previous video first. It'll be linked in the description box below. When I open Obsidian, I see a list of all my existing notes in alphabetical order on the left-hand side of the screen but that organization is totally arbitrary. It's completely meaningless. It's difficult to meaningfully access these ideas when they're in this linear format. Instead, another option I have to look at all of my knowledge is to open graph view. I can do that to the far left of the screen beside my notes. And if I click on that, it is equally unusable and confusing. Even though the organization is more meaningful, it's still difficult to find a way in here. Those orange circles look promising, but they are tags and I don't use tags to reference any content and I honestly might get rid of them completely in the coming months. What I really need to get inspired is a mind map of ideas that might be very different from each other, but are related in some meaningful way if that mind map of ideas is small enough, I'll be able to look at the cluster of ideas and create new ideas from connecting two things that have never been connected before, maybe by anyone. And the place that we're going to find those little mini mind maps is in the local graph view of individual notes. So that means step one, we're going to need to make some notes. When I notice a theme starting to emerge in my thinking, and this could be absolutely anything, I make a note for it. As an example, I noticed that I was talking about failure a lot, in general, in a lot of contexts. So every time the word failure appeared in my notes, I would put double square brackets around it. And eventually there were enough notes about failure that I turned failure into a note itself. And you'll see that in this note, it isn't really a note, it just says backlinks to tags about failure. And that's because I'm primarily using this space as like my little mind map location to get inspired. On the right hand side, you're going to see all of the backlinks. So these are all of the notes that are pointing towards the idea of failure. But again, they're in a linear format and really difficult to access and see their interconnections. So instead we're going to open up local graph view. To do that, go to the upper right hand corner of the note that you're in and click on the three little dots. Scroll down and you'll find something called open graph view. If you click on that, the graph view will open for this particular note. And what you get looks like a little mind map. We have failure in the middle and then we have a bunch of lines pointing out to ideas that are about failure and it's just one link deep. So each of those little nodes around failure all connect to many other things as well, but we can only see specifically the things connected to failure right now. Now in the upper left-hand corner of the graph view, you're going to see a little settings bar. It might look like the little settings gear or it might look like a little square. And that little box has a bunch of filters and display options. I use almost none of these, but you can play around with them for sure. I might, for instance, make these nodes closer together so that we can see them all at once. Or you could turn on the arrows to see which notes are pointing towards which other notes. But the only 
only real setting that I actually change here to help my note making process is in the filters area at the top. Right now we can only see all of our ideas related to failure. We can't see if those ideas are related to each other and that's gonna be super important. So what I do is I turn on neighbor links and then you'll see all of the connections that have already been made. So now I can not only see that failure is connected to this idea about failure in circus, but failure in circus is also connected to ideas about circus staging failure and risk taking in theater and circus and ideas about theatrical problems. Now we have everything in place for creativity and thinking to happen. In a note making session, my only goal is to form connections that haven't been formed yet. So that's step two. Make notes first and then form connections. And there are two ways that I form connections. Firstly, I could add a connection to the existing notes. And secondly, I could make a new note that connects two ideas. And I do these two things iteratively because they tend to spur each other on and my momentum in note making will build. One idea leads to another, which leads to another and so on. I'm usually not aiming to achieve anything in particular in my note making sessions. I have no actual like plan. I just go into one of these little mind maps and I let my inspiration carry me forward. So for example, for the first type of connecting, I might look at this graph here and see that failure in circus, this note is connected to these three ideas, but it's not connected to how failure is rare in circus performance. And it, it seems like those two things should probably be connected. So in that case, I might go into one of those two notes and add a link to the other one. Probably what happened here is just that I made one note before the other one and then when I made the second one, I forgot that the first one existed. So I didn't make it that connection at the time. And this little mind map has reminded me that, oh, that past note exists and you should probably connect these things so that in the future, when you're in either one of those notes, you can see that there's more ideas. You'll actually be reminded of that relevant idea when you're writing your paper or whatever. But the more exciting way that I form connections and the way that I'm gonna show you now is when I get a new idea from the combination of two or more other existing ideas in this little map. And yeah, that's exactly what I did this morning. So let me talk you through it. The first thing I noticed when looking at this mind map is that the note you can't cheat at juggling was on its own. It wasn't connected to any other ideas about failure. And that's probably not great. That probably doesn't make a lot of sense. The more connections that a note has, the more likely it is going to be useful to me. So maybe I wanna work at building more connections to that note. And now that I've identified a note that I wanna work with, that I'm getting inspired by right now, I need to know what that note is about. And there's two ways that you can do this. Firstly, I could go back into the settings of the graph view and I could increase the depth. Right now we're at the link depth of one. I can only see the things that are one link away from failure. But if I increase that to two, I can also see everything that those notes are one link away from. So in this graph view, that gets pretty confusing already. But if I go back to you can't cheat at juggling and I look around it, I can see if any of the notes connected to it are connected to anything that has to do with failure already. And maybe that's my way in. In this case, that didn't work out for me. This is looking way too complex and I'm already getting uh, afraid of it. So instead I actually went into the note about how you can't cheat at juggling to get more information about what's going on there. And when I click on that note in the local graph view, it opens up the note on the left-hand side and it actually opens up the graph view for that new note on the right-hand side and it keeps all of my filters intact. So this graph is still two links deep and it's the same distance of links that I had before and everything. So it's got that consistency, which I really like. Now looking at this note, we need to get inspired. And I see that it's pulled from a quote by Penn Jillette, where he says that when we are learning things and we're trying to achieve goals, sometimes we can sort of cheat because the conditions of success are quite vague for that thing. But in juggling, the conditions for success are so clear, it's impossible to cheat. And I do remember that a second ago, you can't cheat at juggling was connected to the idea that juggling teaches life skills. So I started thinking about what life skill this particular idea might teach us. And I noticed that there is a note called fear of failure. So I was curious about that. I open it up and notice it's connected to some ideas about perfectionism. And it says fear of failure causes perfectionism which causes procrastination, which causes never living out your dreams. So clearly fear of failure is a bad thing. And maybe because we can't cheat at juggling, it means 
embracing the failure and realizing that the only way we can ever achieve our goals is through failure. So we should actually appreciate and respect failure, not fear it. So that seems like my way in here. I've gone back into the note, you can't cheat at juggling. And I've written that idea down, connected it to the note, fear of failure. And I even created a new idea for a note to expand on the idea that getting better at juggling requires frequent fa failure. And actually, if you look at the right-hand side right now and see the local graph view for you can't cheat at juggling, it's gotten way more exciting already. And I could use that mind map now for a future inspirational start point for another note making session. So now I click on that new note that I am going to make. And this is the note that was missing from my original mind map on failure. It's the thing that exists at the intersection of the note you can't cheat at juggling and the note fear of failure. And when I open it, the local graph view is already open too. And you can see that it's connected to you can't cheat at juggling. As I am taking this note, I connect it to the idea of failure and the idea of perfectionism. And I also realized that I should have a note about how failure is a good teacher in general. So I've put double square brackets around the words failure teaches that I have just written. And since that note just appeared in my head, I click into that one and I document the thought that I just had about that idea as well, before I forget it. And I actually end up writing about the video I'm currently making right now um, <laughs> because um, it's an example of how I failed and that failure helped me realize how I could do things better. <laughs> And every time I fail at a video, I learn something new about video making because I have no background in filmmaking or video making or social media or anything like that. So I really am um, learning through trial and error. Failure really is my teacher in this. And when I'm done that and I go back to my original note about failure, it's way more complex. And if this map gets too complex, I'm not gonna be able to use it anymore for inspiration because there'll just be too much going on there. But there will be enough notes at that point that I can pop into any of those connected notes and check out a new little mind map and get inspired by that instead. And eventually in the future, when failure becomes a really interesting and complex meaty topic within my slipbox, I can make the actual failure note space into a map of content to guide my way through my slip box even further. On the other hand, sometimes there is a note with just too few connections and you can't use it as like a mind map, brainstorming, idea making session inspiration. For instance, my note on perfectionism is fairly new and it doesn't have a lot going on yet. So in that case, when there's too few notes to really get inspired, you could increase the link depth to two to create a little bit of a bigger mind map, have a bit more ideas floating around that you might accidentally connect to and create new ideas. And when I do this, I can see that perfectionism is connected to the note perfectionism stems from shame, which is connected to the note scarcity. And that makes me think that perfectionism really does come from a scarcity mindset because perfectionism means not putting something out because it's not perfect enough. And a scarcity mindset is always feeling like there's not enough. So I clicked control N to create a new note. And then I called the note perfectionism is the result of a scarcity mindset. That's the idea I just had because I saw those two words next to each other. And I use my own experience here again as an example and write in this note. When I make YouTube videos, I sometimes fall into the trap of perfectionism and I link to perfectionism. In doing this, I work on a video for hours and hours, never getting it good enough for me to feel like I can post it. But there is no limit to how many YouTube videos I can post. Not posting is a result of a scarcity mindset around videos. And then I link to scarcity. And at the end of this note, I remember Austin Kleon's book, Show Your Work. And that book is not something that has shown up in my slip box yet. So I create the note for that. I put double square brackets around the words, show your work. And eventually I'm sure I will make a, an actual note for his book as well. When I put double square brackets around something, but I don't actually click into it to make it into a physical note, it appears instead as a dark purple text. And in the graph view, it appears as a dark gray circle. And that's just a note that doesn't actually exist yet, even though I'm trying to point to it. I also then realized that I've mentioned YouTube twice in the past couple notes that I've made. And so it could be useful to have a note pointing to ideas about YouTube. 
And then when I have enough ideas about YouTube, I'll create the YouTube note. And already there'll be a bunch of ideas pointing towards YouTube. And I may be able to use that mind map to inspire a future YouTube video about what I've learned on YouTube. So I try to capture that thought as I'm having it. Okay, so that was a note making session in my life. Many of you have been asking me about the graph view and how I use it. And I'll be totally honest with you, when I started using Obsidian, I didn't use graph view at all. I thought it was just a pretty feature. But since then I watched Linking Your Thinking's video on the topic, which was really great. And I will link below in case you need more examples of how people use graph view. If you have any other videos you'd like to see from me, do comment below because I am listening to your suggestions and you're inspiring me to be a better note taker and use things like the graph view. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for commenting and liking this video and subscribing if you so wish. If you haven't watched my other videos on the Tettlecast, and please do. And if you're thinking of starting with Tettlecast and haven't read Sanka Aaron's book, How to Take Smart Notes, I highly recommend it. You can also get a refresher on this book on the app Short Form, which is available for your computer and for your phone. And I have an affiliate link for them. So if you click the link below and get Short Form, you will also be supporting my channel. And learning more about how to take smart notes and many other topics because they are a book summary app. That's all from me for today. The local graph view has seriously leveled up my note making abilities, which is seriously going to level up my dissertation research and turn that whole process of creating ideas from something totally scary and intimidating and complex and overwhelming, really. Sometimes I would get super overwhelmed. It's going to turn that into an enjoyable, like fun time. So that is why I'm making these videos so that you all can level up your note-taking productivity abilities with me and have just like a super fun time while doing it. Like, is that so much to ask? Clearly it's not because the slip box method exists and obsidian exists. Have a great time note-taking everybody and I'll see you in another video soon. <laughs>